every single day. I want to be better. I want to be able to communicate more effectively. I want to use my words properly. Sometimes I mess up. Sometimes I even revert back to talking like I was in a hood. But guess what? The goal is not to be that. The goal is not to subject my daughter to being that. I don't want my daughter to go through the things that I went through in order to get to where I am. I want her to get the lessons. I want her to understand the purpose of hard work, but I don't want her to be sitting here in front of a crack house, two doors, two or three doors down in order for her to understand what it takes in order to be an overcomer. We got to do better. If you don't even want to do it for yourself, do it for your wife, do it for your kid, do it for your unborn kid, do it for the people that are depending on you and the person that you're going to influence. That's not cool. Ain't nobody trying to be like the hood. We trying to get away from the hood. That's the goal, all right? So Rita's over there putting up a Christmas tree. The Christmas tree is very, very tall. Apparently, Rita said, listen, Anton, we're going to host Thanksgiving this year, and it's important for you to be here. Last year, last year, I decided, listen, I don't feel like being bothered with some of these people because I don't look at them as family. I look at you guys as family. Our gang gang wasn't as big as it is today, but I look at you guys as family. And so I said, you know what? I'm going to catch y'all later. Rita and Leslie, they went to the whole Thanksgiving shebang. Anton Daniels decided I wanted to go to Vegas. So I went into Vegas. I messed up the church's money. No, that's a joke. <laughs> I did lose a bag last year in Vegas. I mean, I lost a bag, but I had a ball. I vlogged from Vegas. I had a good time. Vegas was my Thanksgiving. I have no problem traveling by myself and we have no restrictions in our relationship when it comes to um, our ability to get out and fulfill whatever we need internally in order to be able to thrive externally. You know what I'm saying? So I needed to be in Vegas. I was in Vegas. I had a good time. That vlog is still up on my other channel and shout out to everybody that was holding me down even back then last year this time. All right. But yesterday and it it made my heart feel absolutely awesome to see thank you for my tea you're so lovely and you making tea looking all sexy and beautiful and you switching as you walk by stop twerking stop twerking but no seriously um it makes my heart glad when i can be family man I love being family, man, because it's the thing that we desired when we were when we were growing up. Rita and I was out in the streets downtown yesterday. You know, I'm in the streets every single day, which is one of the reasons why I document my journey and I do my videos. I do my videos where I bring y'all along the journey with me to help you to understand what my thoughts are, what's going on. And then I get to record in real time and then drop it on y'all for the other channel. In addition to live streaming on, a, on this channel. But me and Rita was in the streets last night, right? And so we downtown and then we made a stop over to MGM and we kicked it with some people. Shout out to everybody that ran into me at MGM yesterday. Y'all dope. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all showing me love. Everybody that run into me, nobody ever got any kind of negative thing to say about me. I don't even know how I got a dislike on this video when I haven't even gotten started into the video really yet. We just kicking it. We not even 10 minutes in and I already got two dislikes. Shout out to the Dusty Dusties. We love you too. I prayed for y'all this morning. I prayed for y'all this morning. Neither here nor there. But me and Rita, we was out in the streets. Everybody's showing us love. We stopped over to MGM. Uh, threw the dice at the table a couple times. Lost a couple bets. But we cool with that. We cool. But yesterday was a very, very interesting day. It was a very, very interesting day. It seemed like uh, there was a lot of high highs and low lows when it comes to the different things that I seen from the time that I woke up all the way into the time that I put my head on the pillow. Even my my thumb, like I had got a little bit bothered and I'm like, mm, and I went to throw my phone and then I hit my hand on the thing and then I cut it. I said, what is going on today? We got news with regard to Young Dolph and that happening and then people sent me some articles with regard to Chris Tucker and I don't like to see anybody in financial trouble. And then when I was at the table yesterday and I was standing next to a guy and we laughing and we playing and we was talking about the Dolph thing. And he was like, yo, Anton, I think it's going to be a war. It's going to be a war down there. It's going to be war similar to. And then we was talking about a specific situation that was happening in Detroit just recently with regard to what was going on in the streets and the hood. 
Because I'm still tapped in and I still got friends all over. And he like, yeah, 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 so on and so forth. And it was just like it was getting them amped up. I couldn't understand it for the life of me. I could not understand it for the life of me. And let me tell you why. Because I like being family, man. The whole goal growing up in the hood, and a lot of us came from the hood, right? Some of us were exposed to uh, other lifestyles, such as me and my father making a sacrifice and sending me to private school, but we were still walking home to the hood. In high school, we caught the bus downtown to go to Cast Tech to go to school, and then when I got home, we caught the bus back to the hood. Even when my uh, grandparents and stuff like that, when they got money, we still stayed in the hood. But the goal was to always, at some point, once you got exposed to something different, to get out of the hood. I had never seen anybody that survived and thrived staying in the hood. And so very early on in my life, I realized I no longer wanted to be a witness to what happens when the raid van pulls up. I no longer wanted to be exposed to the possibility of somebody dying or a house getting broken into or seeing a freaking crackhead at the corner store looking like he's stoned out of his mind. And then that just becoming a normal part of my day because my father sending me to private school and middle school had exposed me to something completely different. And so I changed my narrative because that was no longer normal for me. I no longer wanted to be subjected to gang wars and eight mile sconies, seven mile bloods and all of this other type of stuff. I, as a young man, and then growing up even through my marriage, the goal was to make it out of the hood. My homeboy Maris, shout out and uh, rest in peace to Maris. Kojak know what I'm talking about. My homeboy Maris. We used to catch the bus, the Hamilton bus, and I would go over to his hood and he would make sure that, you know, Anton get a pass and all of this other type of stuff. And then he would come over to my hood and we would hoop and we would do certain things. And then we grew apart as we graduated high school. But then at some point, he was one of the first people that I graduated with. He was a smart dude, but he was never able to shake the people that were around him that influenced him to go into a specific lifestyle. And then I found out that he, he had got killed. Another homeboy of mine's Juan. Shout out to Juan. Juan was getting money. Juan was one of the first people that I seen. One of the first young dudes that I graduated with that had the, the mink coats on and the Bentleys and all of this other type of stuff. Juan had got his Bentley way before I was ever driving a Bentley. And then Juan had to go away for a while. Even in the people that I seen success in, I had never seen anybody fully pull away from and make it out the hood. So when we finally seen some people, and there was some people that my father and my mother had took into our lives, and they had laid on our couches and our beds and slept on our floors because their parents was crackheads and stuff like that. Some of them had wind up becoming successful and having families and working for Coca-Cola and all of these different things, and they thrived. And they were successful. Relatively. I mean, they weren't rich. But they had fully engulfed themselves in becoming solidly middle class and some of them even upper middle class. And they had a greater ceiling and a greater expectation for me. But the point that I'm making is that I always and even the people that was around me that wasn't able to get themselves out of the hood. Shout out to Juan. You know, you already know, Kojak. Did a serious bid. I never, ever, ever seen anybody that tied themselves to the hood long term get out of it all the way for the rest of their life and thrive nobody not one person but it was the goal for most of us some of us couldn't see it because that's all that they had ever known they didn't even know anything outside of their hood all they knew was the hood. They didn't know nothing about even going to Ohio from Detroit, Chicago, Pittsburgh. Pfft, you can forget it. New York. That was just something that we seen from rappers on TV. Nas, DMX, Jay-Z, all of them type of dudes. But they had never in any way, shape or form ever expected or wanted to because it was the only thing that they ever, ever known ever getting out of the hood. This is real life. 
So now that I'm family man at 39 years old, we survived. We made it. We got out of the hood. Not only did we get out of the hood, but we got our families out of the hood. My wife is from Exit 9, Joy Road in Detroit. If you don't know nothing about it, you can look it up. My wife is from Joy Road, fam. Out of the hood. Not only did I get my wife out the hood, I got my wife's mother out the hood. I got her family out the hood. We got everybody out the hood. Everybody is safe. Everybody is thriving. Everybody is winning. That was the goal. That was the goal. So when I was talking to the gentleman yesterday and he was talking about the wars and all of this stuff that was about to happen or whatever, he was a little bit younger than me. It just, it just did something to me. And it was like, I just had to set him aside. I pulled him aside straight up at the, at the freaking casino. And I put, I said, bro, wasn't the goal to get out of the hood. And he stopped. He was like, what you mean? I said, bro, that's what we got out. That's what we worked so hard for was to get out. I said, you don't even stay there and you still connected somehow. Look, I can hear the ambulance right now and it gives me memories and 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 things that happened back in my childhood that remind me of certain things in my lifetime i said bro is it wasn't the goal to get out of the hood i said yeah he said yeah i said you ain't even in the hood no more i said you stay over there he said yeah i said so what you still doing going back to the hood bro ain't nothing there for you you fool to them I don't care how cool you are. I don't care how connected you are. You fool to them, bro. When I was staying in the hood and I thought I was going to keep it real and keep my money in the hood, I got carjacked. I got robbed by people that I grew up with. It wasn't nobody that I didn't know. It was a setup. The goal was to get out. What am I trying to convince to you? What am I trying to convey to you guys today? What am I trying to convince you for? What am I trying to convince you? I'm trying to convince you that it's just as important to get out of the hood physically as it is to get out of it mentally. When I see people get fired from their jobs and stuff like that, and then they go to another job and they get fired for the same thing. I know that the issue was that they didn't change themselves mentally as much as they're moving physically. And the problem is that they're still taking them with them, which is one of the reasons why people don't want you in their neighborhood because they don't want you to take this trauma and these issues and this way that you think with you and bring it to the space that they're in safe because they never wanted to go to the hood in the first place. Are we gonna get real or are we gonna talk real? Don't nobody wanna have that hood. Man, you think that junk is cute. You think it's cute parking on your neighbor's grass, jumping the curb. That junk ain't cute. That ain't fun. Don't nobody want to be chilling next to you. Ain't nobody trying to be smelling weed smoke from your crib every single time that they walk through the door. Don't nobody want to subject them kids, their kids to that. They want their kids to go to the best schools. You want your kids to go to the best schools. You just want to be the one anomaly to mess it up for everybody else. The point is, is that you have to change your mentality just as much as you change your physical location because you wind up finding yourself in the very same circumstances and situations that you were when you was back in the hood. We don't want our insurance prices to be high. We want, we trying to get our insurance prices lower. I pay freaking $848, $848 a month for my cars for insurance. Michigan and Florida already got the highest insurance prices. And then you're going to come in here messing everything up. You got to change the way that you think. You got to detach. You got to no longer be a hood booger mentally just as much as you are physically. The first thing that you should be looking to do is change your mindset. And then that naturally translates into your actions, the way that you talk, the way that you walk. You shouldn't even have to code switch when you go to work. You should just be able to communicate effectively. This is the way that I talk all the time. If you see me in person, this is the way that I talk. If you see me online, this is the way that I talk. When I go into these offices, when I go into these meetings, this is the way that I talk. I'm interested in becoming a better version of myself every single day. 
I want to be better. I want to be able to communicate more effectively. I want to use my words properly. Sometimes I mess up. Sometimes I even revert back to talking like I was in a hood. But guess what? The goal is not to be that. The goal is not to subject my daughter to being that. I don't want my daughter to go through the things that I went through in order to get to where I am. I want her to get the lessons. I want her to understand the purpose of hard work, but I don't want her to be sitting here in front of a crack house, two doors, two or three doors down in order for her to understand what it takes in order to be an overcomer. We got to do better. If you don't even want to do it for yourself, do it for your wife, do it for your kid, do it for your unborn kid, do it for the people that are depending on you and the person that you're going to influence. That's not cool. Ain't nobody trying to be like the hood. We trying to get away from the hood. That's the goal, all right?